Hello, James. James here. I hope you're having a good holiday out there. I hope you have the one today. Uh, sorry, the room was kind of dark. I just didn't, and it's like turn on the light. But anyway, I want to show you a couple videos. Shout out to these people, uh, Jedediah, um, one of the, one of the slaves, this other young man, and this is directed to the black men. And uh, watch this video, and I'll get back with my commentary. And, uh, so this is what this is what the movie is showing, right? This is going to start happening, right? So now here's another major point. Now he's driving, he's trying to find his way back, but he's lost, and this is what he encounters along the road. This is really, really, really important. Really, really important. I want people to pay attention to this scene. Fair use. Copyright 1976. Latina, so she represents the Latino community. Mm. Very important. I'm gonna hit play, okay? Spanish to him, and I and I looked up the translation of what she's saying. She's like, you know, I'll, I've been walking on the road for hours. Thank God I found you. I had to flee my house because it's getting crazy out here in the street. So she's saying stuff like this to him, and he knows the situation. But what does he say? I don't speak stand Spanish, but he knows what's going on. She's out there by herself. We have. How can I say this? All right. If y'all understand what I'm saying after I say this, I want y'all to put a 100 in the chat. All right. And this is no shade. This is this is no shade at anybody. But I've just got to call it how some people are. There is a certain portion of Latino brothers and sisters that really identify themselves as being white. And they act like they're not black and that they have no black heritage. And they do stuff like they have a saying, bettering the race, meaning don't marry anybody black, marry somebody white. Oh man, I see a bunch of hundreds in there, right? I've even seen this type of spirit in the truth. I've seen this with several uh, Latin brothers and sisters in the faith. And they look down on black people. This is a sum, all right? It's not all, at all. Not by any means am I saying this is the majority or not, but there is a portion, right? And some of them think that they can identify as white. In fact, some of them do. They say, I am a, how do they say it? A white Hispanic, or they have terms non-white Hispanic. What is it? You don't know the terminology. It's usually, like on a census or on a job application or for loan applications, when they say put your ethnic ethnicity, they have usually white, they have black, Indian, they have Native American, and they have white non-white Hispanic, white Hispanic. A lot of people be checking white Hispanic. They put down that they white. Right? And they say they have to better the race by making sure they avoid black people at all costs and they have a certain level of racism just as much as white people. Now, if y'all understand what I'm saying, put a hundred there. Okay? Put a hundred. And it's like I said, there's no shade and not everybody's like that by any means. But if y'all understand me, put a hundred. Let me see if people understand what I'm saying. 
Yeah, I see some hundreds there. If you've experienced this with some of our Latin brothers and sisters, I know I have. Yeah, but I have too. Some, I didn't say all. I'm not saying all by any means. But some of them really identify and associate with white people. And now in this scene, you're going to see that they're going to be left stranded on the side of the road trying to be white, thinking they down with the white folk and the white folk ain't really going to have nothing to do with them. Let's play this. Let's play the clip. So I'm gonna, I gotta stop it every few seconds. But she's about to find out that she's not one of them. You know, and it's gonna be a rude awakening for a lot of our Latino brothers and sisters who got this mentality that they're not really black or that they look down on us for being black for not mixing in with the heathen like they did. A lot of them willingly mixed in with the heathen. And a lot of us didn't. But that's what it is. I'm not saying nothing about that, but some of them look down on us. All right? So I'm talking about the ones who look down on us for that. Some of them think they're, they're better because they have a colonizer blood within them. And they look down on us. All right, have you experienced this? Y'all yeah. say Kane here in this room? If you have experienced that, put a seven in the chat. If you've experienced this. Yeah. Now, we're not talking about hate for nobody, okay? We're not supposed to hate our brothers and sisters. Y'all said not even hate Esau. To not despise uh, an Edomite. So he's our brother. So we're not talking about that. But we're showing you the warning signs that y'all are saying. Let's get a scripture for it. Let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah. I think 14. We're already in Yeshua. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to 14. Let's do Isaiah 14. Let's start at 2. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of your home for servants and handmaids. And they shall take the captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So y'all yeah, said the time's going to come when we're going to rule over our oppressors. But some of these brothers and sisters want to be our oppressors too. They've got a, a special white privilege pass in certain areas. And instead of saying, you know what, I don't want nothing to do with this, this ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to love my black brothers and sisters the way they have loved us. Some of them, they want that master card. The master card, right? <laughs> you know, it's similar to uh, you know how modern Christianity wants to skip over Israel. Right. They, they take the promise away from Israel and try to apply it to everybody else. Mm hmm. No? Mm -hmm. And it's the same trying to skip the line type of mentality. Being mm -hmm. Isaiah 13 14, Toda. Go ahead, read that. And it shall be as a chaste world. A row is a, again, what? A deer. And as a sheep that no man takes up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Yes, this is it, Cain. Go ahead. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Everyone that is joined unto them in white supremacy. Everyone who is a substitute white supremacist, but not white who's been deputized by this country shall fall by the sword. So all of those Latino brothers and sisters who want to join themselves unto the heathen instead of joining themselves unto the Most High and unto Judah, they're going to fall by the sword. That's what's in this movie. That's what Obama is showing you. I didn't make the movie and I didn't write the scriptures. I'm just showing you what y'all are saying. 
Again, put a seven in the chat if y'all understand. Some of them think they really down or whatever, cause you know. Some of the brothers and sisters who come as migrants, they step over our people, right? You know, am I, am I, am I telling the truth? Let's bring it out. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Look at that face, he don't care, man. That MasterCard is about to expire, man. <laughs> they quick to understand when they need you to work for them when you need them to do something around the house, but mm. it was just time for you to repay the favor or for them to repay the favor. Mm. You know how they like this, you know? Yeah, and he's leaving her out there. She is totally out there in the wilderness by herself with no way to get back. And that's what's going to happen to the people who join themselves onto the heathen. Okay, this is this is what it is. Okay. All right, y'all ready for the next scene? Y'all enjoying the study so far? All right, we're gonna get through this. All right, man, if y'all enjoy, hallelujah. All right, just telling the truth, man. You know, and, and I'm saying it with love. Okay, no shade, no shade. Okay. Here who is 
was practicing her Satanism and ultimately trying to get this brother taken out by the police. You know what I mean? When they make these desperate calls here, that's all it's about, people. They're calling, they're acting paranoid, they're, they're paranoid and scared because she knows what she's trying to do is still very effective and it works. She's done it before and nobody who has the power to do something about this has ever did anything to her for real. You know, white women lying on black men is an American pastime. It's, a, it's as American as apple pie, Chevrolet, and baseball, and it goes all the way back to the plantation, and it's never stopped. It's never stopped. Now, this one right here, what we're covering today, is for the young brothers in college, the young sisters in college, or whoever, you know? And you gotta really watch out. Keep your head on the swivel. Especially in college, you young black athletes, uh, or even you young academics who are just hanging out, you know, pay attention. Think, step back, think, and then make a decision, okay? Now, you remember back in like 2016, there was a white girl named Nikki Yovino? Nikki Yovino, okay? A little bit more about this story. This is a, this is a never forget. You know, since we deal with the trauma-based amnesia so much, we're going to keep these stories active right here. 2016, not that long ago, Nikki Yovino, she's a 19-year-old white girl from Long Island, New York. She was a student at Sacred Heart University in Bridgeport, Connecticut, okay? So this Nikki Yovino, she's at a party in college, you know, drinks, drugs, guys, girls, just a place full of sin, you know, full of sin, having a great time, what they like to do in college, you know, white kids, you know, black kids coming together, whatever, whoever's there, predominantly white at this school, you know. So Nikki Yavino's at this party, and she has consensual relations with two black players on a football team at this school, in the bathroom, okay? She decides that she wants to have consensual relations with two players on a football team in the bathroom at this party, okay? Then after she does this, she goes and tells people that the players attacked her and basically R-worded her after it was consensual, after she made a decision to do that, okay? In the police report, she claimed that she said to the players, she said, she claimed that she said, I don't want to be in here. I don't want to do anything. My friends are waiting for me outside. Let me go outside. And according to this police report, Nikki Yavino also said that she was not allowed to go outside. She was not allowed to leave this bathroom until these two young black players were done what they had to do, okay? So after she gave this story, the detectives went and questioned the young black men that she accused on a football team at the university. Now, both of these young men, they both stated that they did have relations with Nikki Yavino in the same area that she said that they had it at, but it was uh, consensual. You know, they actually uh, repeatedly asserted that there was no coercion involved in any way, shape, or form to get intimate with this girl, Nikki Yavino. They even showed the detectives text messages from her, okay? Now, what happened was Nikki Yavino was eventually questioned by a savvy detective who probably didn't believe her, probably didn't believe her, you know, and he told her that there's video footage near the bathroom that she claims has happened at on the night that she claimed that they have video footage of that, okay? It was all a fake out though. He was testing her when he said this to her. And right after that, she started backpedaling on her story because she believed it. She said, oh man, he has camera footage. So now she's trying to tell the truth. In addition to that, one of Nikki Yavino's student friends gave a statement that proved that she was lying. She has a friend that said they heard her tell the two young black men on the football team she was definitely interested in getting physically involved with them. So the bottom line here, people, is Nikki Yavino got busted. She got caught in a lie, and now she has to get in trouble for it. Now, there's an official document that read, Nikki admitted that she made up the allegation of S.A., you know what that is, people, against the football players. Because it was the first thing that came to mind, and she didn't want to lose another male student as a friend and potential boyfriend. She stated that she believed 
when the other male student heard the allegation, it would make him angry and sympathetic to her. So Nikki Yovino, pretty much, she's so sick, people, that she wants to have some kind of relations with these two black players on a football team. So then she does it. But then she wants another dude to be her boyfriend. So she lies to him, right? So she lies to, uh, uh, to the one so that she gets the one she wants to be her boyfriend so he can have sympathy for her. She lies to him, okay? And I bet the boyfriend that she wanted was white. I bet he was a white guy. But that's the okie doke that a lot of white women run, like Nikki Yovino, that they run. The okie doke like that. She wants to have these sexual relations with black men, but still hopes to secure herself a nice white guy for the future. This is what she was trying to do. So her goal was she was going to go tell the other guy. I'm not 100% sure the other guy is white, y'all. For real, I can't even say it. You know, I think he is. That's an opinion. The guy that she wants to have sympathy for her, that's an opinion. I'm not sure. But I'm saying this is something that a lot of white girls and white women pull anyway. I'm assuming this is a white guy, but she wanted to do what she wanted to do with the two players on the football team, okay? Now, she was eventually, she had to get in trouble for what she did, okay? She was sentenced to one year behind bars. She pled guilty to two counts of falsely, falsely reporting an incident in the second degree and one count of interfering with officers, okay? She was originally charged with a felony of tampering with evidence and misdemeanor falsely reporting an incident. Okay, uh, the plea agreement that she uh, that that it came to allow Nikki Yavino to avoid the more serious felony charge while still serving time behind bars. Okay, so the plea also avoided uh, the chance that the more risky felony charges would be a uh, reversed on an appeal. Would I mean would have been a uh, reversed on appeal? So she did this. She's got to get in trouble. They dropped the hard charges, but she's still getting hit with some. Both of these former athletes lost their scholarships due to these false accusations. One of them left college off the, altogether. The other one, he went and uh, tried to start paying his own way through college. I mean, hopefully, they're out now and doing what they want to do with their life, and they're successful. So, yes, this Nikki Yavino by now, she's out as well. This happened in 2016, and she's probably somewhere else lying on some more guys. You know, doing what she wants to do best, okay? Uh, these athletes uh, who Nikki Yavino lied on, they did move forward with a civil suit against her. I do not know what the outcome is of that. If anybody knows, get in the comments. Let us know what the outcome of the civil suit was that these players put on Nikki Yavino. Nikki Yavino's not broke. I mean, she's not poor yet. Hit her over the head. Hopefully they did hit her over the head. And let me tell you something else about this Nikki Yavino character. See, a, a lot of these white women like her, they do this. They go to college, they sleep around with these black players on the team. They want to be the assistant uh, athletic director, the scorekeeper. You know, they want to hold these little positions. The water, the water, the water girl. You know, they want to be the assistant physical trainer, and they get these reputations and things like that. Or they just want to be a party girl. They go out to these colleges and sleep with all these athletes, do all these things, get these reputations. And then when these white women go out in the real world, they can't get the white man they want, right? Because some white American men who are taking advantage of being white in America and being successful, they don't accept white women who slept with black men. It's not going to happen. That's against the code, okay? You know what I mean? That's the first thing that a white man asks a prospective white woman. You could even go out and ask them. As soon as they start getting when they at, you, 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 you sleep with black guys? You ever slept with black guys? They have to know that. Ask them. Ask, ask, ask any of them. And if they haven't, they haven't. But if they have, they'll lie and they'll say no. You know, the ones that tell the truth, they will definitely get rejected by the, by the, the white guy that they want, you know. They tell the truth. Now, he don't want it no more. You're a white chick with a biracial baby. Now, white, a white man is trying to be successful. He don't want you. To them, you're damaged goods. You're no good. You know what I'm saying? And when these white women like this get rejected, right? I've seen this in 
law enforcement. And it's, you've seen it too. You've seen it too. Whatever field you work in, especially, you know, in athletics and, you know, law enforcement. And you've probably seen it in the military. You've seen it at your job, whatever. Once these white women get rejected, they get bitter and upset. And they do either one or two things. This, they do either one or two things. This is what they, they do. After all the years and time they spent in college or at work, sleeping with black men, getting a reputation for sleeping with black men, what happens is these white women, they eventually start to get upset with black men because they actually believe that a white man doesn't want them because of black men, okay? They start not accepting responsibility for what they did when they made the decisions, you know, to sleep with 20, 30, and 50 black men, you know? They get mad because now they have a reputation for that. And when these white guys find out, they don't want any parts of her. Okay, they don't want any parts of her. So what she does is she tries to get back in the favor of white men quite often by being a racist and act. A lot of them do this, y'all. A lot of them do. Let me tell you something. Some of the most hardcore, mean, nasty, Karen, Becky's, racist, hating white women in the professional world. Some of the ones you meet just nasty and racist and hateful. Many of them have slept with a lot of black men. Believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? Many of them have slept with a lot of black men. Their attitudes and their bitter racism is a reflection of them being upset. You know, that she's mad because she slept with all them black dudes and now she can't get the white man she wants or white men don't respect her, okay? So they often try to impress these white men by being hardcore racist. That's what a lot of them do. I've seen this in law enforcement so much. You know, there'll be an older, like, you know, you'll see like an older white woman, you know, older, still working in some position. I'm talking about way high up in the ranks. She has a reputation for, for blocking black people from opportunities, being nasty, being a white supremacist, just doing whatever she could to make sure that black people don't uh, advance in their career. She's nasty and mean. She's getting a reputation. And then you talk some of the, to some of the guys who, the older black guys who maybe have been her peers, her peer or knew her when she was young, and they tell you like, oh yeah, oh yeah, twenty years, oh yeah, twenty years ago, then she, yeah, this we used to call her this, yeah, this, you like, wow. Now she like this, oh yeah, she used to do all that we used to call her. Look how, look how she act when I talk to her. She ain't gonna act like that. I'm like, oh, now she act like that. See, she's so upset and bitter about her past, you know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of them act like that. Bitter, hardcore, racist Karens and Be Beckys. Because they're mad because they made bad decisions. And the white men that they want, they can't get. And they blame the black men that they slept with, you know, that tore their reputation up. Or you get the ones who destroyed their past in, like, college or whatever by laying around with black men. And they know that they don't qualify for a white man that they want, right? They, like, they'll, they'll know, they'll deep down inside, they'll know, okay, they know about me. I don't qualify for the, black, the white man that I want. So then they'll start saying things like, I only like black guys. You know, she knows, she says that because she knows that's the only guy that she can get. You know what I mean? She, that's the only guy that she can get. Because, listen, a white woman who has been rejected by white men and that white men call her a cow or a pig, she can get a decent black man. I've seen this numerous times. I even know one dude that killed himself over one of them. I'm telling you, there'll be a pig to the white guys or a cow, whatever they want to call them, like, oh, like, no. And she'll get a self-respecting black man who has a washcloth, gets his hair cut, shoes clean, you know, has a mom and a dad, may, you know, sleep in the bed and all that other, that's what she'll get, you know what I mean, I'm telling you, or, and then, and then she'll start to say, all I like is black guys, no, you want a white guy, you just can't get one, you know, you only can get a black guy, the white guys that you want, you can't get, or, you know, the ones that have a, a biracial kid or a few biracial kids, you're done. She knows that no self-respecting white American man who's taken advantage of the easy life of being white in America would ever touch her. And then the ones on, you know, who would, they're just, you know, Newport smelling, melt, you know, Mountain Dew mouth type, mullet head, mountain men losers. They don't want them.
but she knows she can get a decent black man. So they'll say, I only like black guys. That's what these Nikki Yovino types do. You know what I'm saying? This is this how it goes down. But people, this was all about the pastime. The American pastime. White lady lies and cries. You know what I mean? It leads to tragedy. You know what I'm saying? And it's still going on. Just like the brother in the video. He's just trying to do his job. He doesn't even have a relationship with this lady. You'll see other black men getting in trouble. You know, white women accusing them of things. They don't even know her. I don't even know you. What? You know what I'm saying? Just to the brothers, just think before you act. The young brothers in school, you're playing sports, doing your thing. You're going to have a lot of pressure. I'm not trying to tell them. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what kind of you know, callings they might be getting or whatever, but you just got to think and be wise. The young sisters as well, be, uh, uh, think and be wise in these situations, okay? Welcome to Reality is Undefeated. I'm at Gatewood. Thank you for tuning in. When I was 11 years old, we had a pit bull named Mac. Pretty little red nose. And when Mac was a puppy, we would take one of the milk crates that held up our mattress and remove it so the corner of the bed would hang down low. And Mac would run up the corner of this bed and when he did, we would jump off. He would run down and chase us and we'd jump back on. And after doing this a number of times, Mac got frustrated. So instead of jumping on the bed, he just starts barking. He jumps up and snaps. Bites my older brother in the lip. Left a permanent scar. Maybe a year later, my cousin Javon comes to town. And we decide to take Mac for a walk. And mind you, Mac is full grown now. So myself, Javon, my older brother, we take Mac for a walk. Bring him to the Cheyenne Sports Complex. Bring him over by where the old pool and water slides used to be back in the day. They had the area fenced off. We found a way to squeeze Mac through the fence and we hopped the fence, you know. And because we were in a fence area now, we let Mac off the leash. Out of nowhere, Mac attacks Javon. It was the most frightening moment of my life. I really thought Javon was going to die that day and it was going to be our fault. But out of nowhere, Mac just snaps right back. Let's Javon go. Now he's wagging his tail looking extremely playful. Javon would have stitches on several parts of his body from this incident, but he would be all right. All right enough to feel like he could still beat me in basketball or chess, you know, a couple years later in Atlanta. My stepdad would give Mac away, basically. Gave him to a guy and this guy brought Mac to a fight Tried to make him fight, but Mac wasn't raised to fight, so, you know, Mac would end up dying. I've always loved pit bulls. They are the prettiest dogs to me. Having a top-tier pit went right along with having, like, a Buick Regal on 13th. It's just all a part of the hood dream. But the day I had kids, I knew I would never own another pit bull. Now, I know people who have pit bulls that are great family dogs. But what I witnessed that day with Javon, knowing that that's a possibility, that's not a risk I was willing to take with my own children. When I read the story of a four-month-old mauled to death by two family pit bulls in North Las Vegas, and at the time my son was five months old, I knew I made the right choice. I grew up like many with household rules. That kitchen better be done when I get home from work. Don't go outside without that homework being done. Be your ass in this house by the time it get dark. You ain't getting nothing to drink until you finish all your food. By the time I was 16, I had grown out of all of that. I could pretty much do whatever I wanted to do. Come and go when I please. You know, didn't have any household chores. But I had a lot of girls, you know, everywhere. The girls around the corner. Multiple girls coming to see me at the same time. Girls calling the house daily. And this is when this new rule will be brought to my attention. 
my mom looked at me dead in the face and said, don't you bring no white bitch to my house. That's it. That's the one rule that at 16 years old, I had to adhere to. And at the time, it just sounded like some bitter black woman shit. So even though I didn't bring one home, I still found myself poking on a few. I guess the trouble that I had back then is that my mom was telling me one thing, despite the fact that the man I called my uncle had a white wife, who I called my aunt, who was very active in my life and who I love. As a kid, she made me cookies on my birthday every year, and I really used to look forward to them. This is something that my wife didn't even know until last year, and this year when I had my birthday, I had a batch of cookies. But my aunt coached basketball, she was active in the community, all of that. So having his mother who told me not to bring home a white woman, while also having his white woman, who was an amazing aunt, became conflicting. So what did I do? I went right to my uncle and asked him why he married a white woman. Straight like that. And him being the straight shooter that he is, he told me exactly why. He said because when he was in college, a star athlete, broke and hungry, she is the one that took care of him. She made sure he had everything he needed during those years. So he placed the loyalty and commitment that was shown to him and his well-being over the loyalty and commitment that he had for his own race. And I completely understood. My uncle sharing that story with me is the reason why I don't judge anyone for who they choose to walk arm in arm with today. And that's good because today I have a sister-in-law who I haven't met yet, but she's a British woman of the lightest variety. My little brother told me years ago that that's what he liked. I said, hey, do you, bro? They produced my youngest nephew, Jackson, which reminds me I have to get on Amazon and send him his New Year's gift. But my little brother couldn't be happier. A few years before I met my wife, her parents got divorced. And her father, my father-in-law, got remarried to a Filipina. My children have had her, my mother, and my wife's mother in their lives since birth. But Grandma Vivian, the one that looks nothing like them, has spent more time, created more memories, and simply done more for them than their other grandmothers combined. To this day, as young adults basically, they see Grandma Vivian and their faces light up. So as you can see, the three non-black women that I have in my family are all women that I speak fondly of. They are all married to men that I have the utmost respect for. But when it comes to two of the three, it could never be me. Because as I got older and came into more knowledge, I realized my mother was not being bitter. No, she was doing what was necessary to protect her black sons. She was doing what was necessary to make sure that they were not the victims of a pit bull attack. See, before I had even heard of the name Emmett Till, she was already aware of the story. So she was already putting in place mechanisms that would deter her sons from taking interest in those women. Deter her sons from being victims of a hate crime. The best method she could think of was to make a rule to not bring them by. Which would make us feel uncomfortable being seen with them by her. And make it too much of a hassle for us to even want to be with one of them. And while I haven't always agreed with my mother, especially in the decision making category, this is one decision that I'm glad she made. Because the more I learn, the more I understand how a pit bull can attack out of nowhere. See, as I already explained, I can understand how a black man ends up with a white woman. But for the life of me, I don't understand how a black man can covet a white woman. How can you ignore the gruesomeness of the attack scene? How can you ignore what happened January 2nd, 1944, when Willie James Howard 15-year-old black boy was kidnapped along with his father, brought to a bridge with his hands and feet bound, given the option to jump in the river below or be shot in the head. He jumped. His body would be found two days later. His father was made to watch the whole thing. And this is all because he wrote Christmas cards to all of his co-workers, one of which happening to be a white woman that he had a crush on. Her father saw the Christmas card and the aforementioned was a result of his rampage. Or July 26, 1949, when Ernest Thomas, a 26-year-old black man, was shot over 400 times while sleeping under a tree. He was a member of the Groveland Four, who were accused of forcibly taking a white woman and severely beating her husband. 
Charles Greenlee was 16 at the time he was sentenced to life in prison. He would be paroled in 1962, but Sam Shepard and Walter Irvin, both 22, were sentenced to death. And when their convictions were overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court, granting them a new trial, they were both shot by the sheriff that was transporting them while they were handcuffed. Shepard died. Irvin survived only to be convicted again and sentenced to death again. His sentence would be commuted and in 1968 he'd be released only to die a year later. The black neighborhoods of Groveland, Florida, like Greenwood, were terrorized by a white mob yet again over something to do with a white woman. The Scottsboro Nine, nine black men accused of the same. Frank Embry, lynched after being accused of assaulting a white woman. Red Summer in D.C., a white woman. John Henry James, a white woman. C.J. Miller, a white woman. Tom Allen, Joe Watts, George White, George Stinney Jr. Do I need to continue? Y'all know why O.J. is the most hated black man in America? Y'all see what those false accusations did to Sean Oakman's career? I don't even have to say what the common denominator of all of these stories are. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of nameless victims accused of the same. This is why when I see a situation like the one that Jonathan Majors is involved in, I just shake my head in perplexity. How do you end up losing such a promising career over a basic ass white woman? Not one that held you down during a rough stretch of your life. Not one that fed you when you were starving. Not one that helped you get through Yale. Not one like Taylor Swift or Kim Kardashian that'll boost your social status at least. He met her on the set of a film and she didn't have a role in the film. This is not a young Angelina Jolie, a young Cameron Diaz, a young Jennifer Aniston. One of those women that you look at and you just have to acknowledge their beauty. This is the chick that was making my sandwiches at Porter Subs. This is the chick that I gave $40 to and said I need that on pump six. This is the chick that you walk past on the sidewalk and don't give a double take. He jeopardized his career over mid-ass Save the Last Dance. And why? The Megan Goods of the world have been available. He was already good. He had already won an Emmy. He had a major role in a Marvel film when they met. Why did this extremely successful black man choose to be with her? Should I answer? Now I can be as off as the daylight at midnight. But in my opinion, he chose her because for some black men, a white woman is the ultimate trophy. It doesn't matter which one they have, as long as they have one, they'll feel accomplished. Now, I really hope that this brother is able to rebound his career. And if not, I'm sure he'll find something to be successful at. Because his success was not an accident. He put in that work. I don't wish anything negative on him, but we have to understand that he put himself in this position. This is what I mean when I say we have all the information available to us and we still walk into the trap. In fact, this was the last example I used in that video titled Systemic Racism Has Been Alive and Well for Centuries and Black People Continue to Walk Into the Trap. But as with every other situation, I find myself asking more questions. Like, why does a successful black man covet every woman except the one that was made from his rib? The black man in America doesn't have his own land, his own language, his own identity, his own government, nothing. That man has gone without everything except a woman he has always had his own woman a woman that went through the fire with him and when he was weak and fell she was the inspiration that gave him the strength to stand back up and continue on his journey and though she wanted to fall too she stood by him step by step not knowing the route to their destination just knowing that wherever he led them they were either going to get there or fall short together that woman has always fought for us look at why dorothy malcolm and May Murray Dorsey were killed. Then ask yourself what a ride or die looks like. They worked the same fields for the same amount of hours. They received the same amount of lashes. And the lashes weren't the only thing they received. They had to open their legs and carry a foreign seed. If you want to know what a black woman embodies, turn on the movie Fences and watch the scene that won Viola Davis an Academy Award. Rose, you're not listening to me. I'm trying to explain it to you the best way I know how. It's not easy for me to admit that I've been standing in the same place for 18 years. Well, I've been standing there with you. It's one of the most powerful scenes I've ever seen. That's what black women are. 
And I'm not standing here saying black women are perfect. Lord knows I've had my battles with black women, especially on this platform. I've been cursed out by many a black woman. I'm the one who, before Ebony K. Williams asked if he owned the bus, said that black women respect nothing but the owners. I'm the one that told them that they don't know what a real man looks like. I'm the one that asked them what the bare minimum is. I've held black women just as accountable as I've held black men. But I never have and I never will say, black man, leave that black woman alone. Black man, there's a better woman out there for you than your own woman. I've never offered my support to that movement. I believe the grass is greener where you water it. The black woman will always be my number one choice. Now I'm not saying that there aren't good white women or women of different nationalities that really love and care for their black men. Nor am I saying that Jonathan Majors wouldn't have been in this situation had he been with a black woman. What I am saying is, once you see a pit bull attack a child, and you ignore that lesson of the past and bring a pit bull around your children, whatever happens is on you. And no, I'm not comparing women to dogs. If you don't understand... So, when it comes to y'all, as, as young black men have lost your lives, they lie on you, say you violated them, you didn't do anything wrong. We've seen times where brothers have rejected them and they lie on them, or he on rejection. I, there was a story in Louisiana a few years ago where one of them sent a, a, a 17 year old boy. She sent him uh, pictures of herself undressed and they charged him with a crime. Him. She did it. But yet, the black dude goes to jail. And we, we talk, we're not talking about 1950s. We're talking about in the 2000s era. Two, I think it was what? A few years ago. Was it 2016, 2015, whatever it was in Louisiana? Y'all may even know this. Okay? Now, you see on the screen, Jonathan Majors and the Forbidden Fruit. Now, my grandmother said this. Oops, sorry about that. tell the story. She said, okay. So, she said, we got people in our community from ebony to ivory, from dark to light. Pick one. She said, but if some reason you meet somebody outside of the community, because it happens. She said, it happens. I know, it happens. People fall in love, whatever. She said, listen, I'm not prejudiced. I don't got nothing to problem with nobody. She said, I don't take a big issue with it as much. I really don't. She had, at the time, she said, she called, she said, if you come in here with a Hispanic woman, eh, I'm okay with that, because they straight hair, she used the N-word. He said, that's about what they are, a lot of them. He said, whether they realize it or not. He said, Asians don't, uh, you know, I mean, they don't fool with it too much, but I wouldn't take much of an issue with that. He said, but that particular woman, no. She said, because that woman, has a history of doing things to our community for a long time along with her man. Because it's not like her man did everything by itself now. She was a, she was buying slaves too. Read the book, they were her property. She caused the riots. It was her. I mean, look, Rosewood. She caused a lot of that stuff that go on by lying on black men for so many, so many times in history. We're talking about history. Black American history. The Hispanic woman didn't do it. The Asian woman, the Arab woman, the East Indian woman, but surely not the black woman. None of those other women did that. But that particular woman has done this. We're talking about the history of America that they don't want taught, right? At the same time, for me, I can say I would come home. I'm dealing with racism. Just, my, just me and my personal opinion. 
I'm dealing with racism, then how I would come home and tell her about it? She would eventually feel conflicted because she's part of that community. Unless, now I've met a few in my day, because like I said, I'm going to be fair in my conversation. I met a few in my day who can't stand their own people because of that. And they're literally cast out their community because of that reason, right? Because part of the culture is anti-black racism. So if they're cast out their community and they understand what it is, like I said, I met on maybe, I think maybe this many in my whole life, and I've been on earth a little while, that I can say, yes, that's that kind of white person. I've met just this many in my life. It's not like I met a, a thousand of them. They far and few in between. Because most of them, they may not say they agree with racism, but they don't. But they know good and well what their community do. And in their community, they may. If you don't agree with racism, you better keep it quiet. You better shut your mouth, because it's always been a consequence in their community for opening their mouth, speaking against anti-black racism. They have put their own people on trees behind speaking up against anti-black racism. They don't like to teach that either. They don't like to talk about that. They real quiet about all the white folks they did this to. Right? Because they make it a... Co- Listen, they view a white person who speaks against anti-black racism worse than we are. They do. They get more angry with them than even they get angry with us. Because in their mind, they're supposed to be on the team. And if they're not on the team, that's a problem. You understand? So, once again, do whatever you want. Your life, your choice. Not me. I ain't got it. Not me. Now, I will say this. A lot of brothers, I don't see really going that route like, you know, Dr. Umar, you know, everybody laughs at him. But I don't see a lot of brothers going that route these days. I really don't. More Even the passport bros. They're not going to Europe. They're going to Latin America. Latin America is not them. There, I, I see the passport bros going to Thailand, Philippines, and Cambodia, and all different, the dark-skinned Asians, not the Koreans. We're talking about the darker Asians, right? The very, very dark ones. They go over there, of course, the African continent, the Caribbean continent, and stuff like that. I see them going there, but I don't see all the, quote-unquote, black passport bros going to Europe. So, they, they, they kind of get that. That portion of it, right? But hell, even I talk about this stuff. Even the white men don't want to deal with his own woman. That, that's how bad it is. I get messages from white men every day when I do talk about the on my entertainment channel, talk about relationships. I get messages from white men every day that tell me they don't even want. Listen, if white men are saying they don't want to deal with their own women, they these are white men. I could show the messages, but I'll have to block out the names. That white men do not want to deal with their own women. White men in Italy, white men in the UK, they can't stand some of their women. So if white men is talking about his woman is a problem, how in the world you think you gonna come in and think you gonna get a better deal and treatment? And on top of that, it's the unfair power dynamic in that relationship with a black man and with this particular woman. Once again, do whatever you want to do. Don't message me. Do you? I'm just talking about reality for black men in America. Now, you get with this woman, you take her to the African continent where she has no power like that, and the majority of people look like you, I guess. Do it that way. But if you're going to fool with her here, or you're going to fool her in any country that she had, that her people's in charge, it's a problem, brother. It's an issue. And I know, I know, some of you are going to say, well, what about the black women? Because you like to c- c- compare yourself to black women. What about the black women? What about they dating all these white guys now and all oh, the divestors and X, Y, Z? First of all, black women, the stories I've seen from them, yes, they've dealt with some racism with some of this stuff. Some of them lost their lives behind up as of recently. I've covered the stories. But... They don't have a. I mean, we know the history of the of the white man with with black women. We know that, but we talking about right now, modern times. They don't have the history that we have. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm saying a black woman couldn't say he touched me, and then a whole riot happened. And it didn't even happen. Understand? So don't compare yourself. Listen, America loves to destroy a black man. That they love it. They listen. Do you understand? These are the same descendants of the people that you see them pictures. They were going to their churches to buy tickets. Like like we buy like Eventbrite, buying tickets to go to torture and put a black man on a tree. Okay? This is America's pastime in destroying black men. And the more high profile of a black man you are, the more they get a kick out of destroying you. So let me, let me, let me put something up. And I got to go there. I got to go there. Because you know me, I'm going to go wherever I need to go in this. Let's look at Miss Grace Jabari right there. Now, you see the woman he's walking away now, Megan Good. I don't have to even say, make comments about her. But this is Miss Grace Jabari. Now, when sisters say, and they've said this, that when you brothers, especially brothers with money, when you get you one, you go, you don't get one that's top of the line. You see, he didn't he didn't go out there and get a top of the line white woman. He didn't go get a Taylor Swift or something. See, Travis Kelsey got that. He didn't go get that. A white woman that got some money and whatever. No, no, he go get this one. This is the one he go get. He the top of his A game, and he did. He don't even get the top. Listen, at least Rich Paul went got a top of the line white woman to deal. At least he was smart enough to do that. One with money. One that's not trying to act a fool. Fighting. They got something to look. Look. Let me tell y'all something else. When you get to certain levels in life, you can't deal with people that have nothing to lose. See, if Jonathan Majors got with a woman that had something to lose, she would have been acting a fool like that. See, if there if there had been a black woman did that mess, they would say, oh, look how ghetto she is. I ain't heard one time they called this woman ghetto. I haven't heard this woman being called, you know, uh, some sort of uh, trailer rat or whatever. I ain't heard none of that. And she doing the exact same thing, fighting, chasing a man down. Come on, we got to be fair, man. We got to be fair. We got to be fair. We got to be fair. I'm a, I'm a brother by being fair. And once again, if you want to be a grace, be with her. I'm not stopping you. I'm just having a conversation with people. That's it. Just a conversation about the reality of what it is in the area of dating for us as black men. You know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and clear this off the screen. But you're still going to have some black men upset what I'm saying. It'd be like this. If God himself told you, brothers... Out of all the billions of women in the world, you can date all these women over here, right? So so if God told you you can date black women, Hispanic women, Asian women, East Indian women, Arab women, you know, uh, all with anybody like that, you can date all them over here. Date them if you want. Marry them if you want. But that woman over here, leave that one alone. That's the forbidden fruit for you in America, for sure. Leave that one alone. A lot of you would get angry with that and say, okay, so you got this many over here, but this, that one, you just get. And that's really what it is. Have you even noticed sometime in the black community, if you, let's say you're not with a black woman, but you get with a woman that has some sort of melanin to her, and she seems like she's decent, a family decent, may not have a big issue and problem, but bring home grace here. You're going to have a problem sometimes. In the black community. So much so, the black community and the white community has a problem with black men and white women being together. It puts a lot of societal pressure on black men and white women in those relationships. That's why when you marry a white woman, statistically speaking, 50% divorce rate. The highest at all couples. I'm just telling you. But like I said, do what you want to do, brother. I'm not telling you what to do. Okay, um, my, my uh, computer clock getting closed up, but I just want to play a little bit of Phil um, and and come back and give my point of view on it. Um, finish out the next five minutes to give you my point of view. Um, here's here's a take on this, guys. Uh, I have talked to. Uh, I remember years ago when I was in Cincinnati. Uh, Ohio, and I stayed out in the suburb, 
and the guy um, I was you know I was, I was like one of the few black people that was in this neighborhood and I was one of the few black people that was in the building and this guy who was a neighbor of mine his wife was you know a white guy right and his, his wife was white but one time one one time you know they started out be, he started to be really cool they're a pretty cool family till one day his wife opened up to me and said that he still can't get over the fact that she slept with a black man. But she didn't have a baby with the black man. But it was the fact that she been with, 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 been with the black man. And I was really shocked because I, you know, you know, I thought, you know, I hung out, talked with dude, and everything. And you know, he likes baseball and things like that. Um, I say this to say it's very is what they're telling you is very true. Um, it's very true, and what what statistically, yeah, that's very true. What and they, you know, people say love see color, don't see no color. In certain cases, it, it does. Um, basically, since the reason why it is. It's because society sees it as a, a class thing. When they see black people, some black people in, in the mainstream news, they fit, and, they, and this is not just white people, but other people too, that black people look on a lower class level. They look on a lower class level of life. Um, even though despite you see black people on TV, in entertainment, sports, um, you know, rumor, you can dance, you can sing, you can, you can do good, good things in the bedroom, but that it, it stays as something like that. It stays as something like, like that. And once that, and once you can't do the five elements, you just, you just another Negro, you know, so to speak. And some people don't say it. They don't put it that way, but they they, they kind of make you feel that way. Um, but yeah, um, but every now and then you'll find somebody that you know find a few people that are good that don't see life that way. But yeah, you know, and I've been friends, you know, with with um, people that are white, Caucasian, and believe me when I tell you. Sooner or later, when you get behind someone's closed door and, and the trueness come out, because everybody got to put on the face, and after a while, they're gonna they going they gonna let you know, stutter, you know, and something gonna slip up, and and this is what I've learned, you know. So, in some cases, yeah. Uh, them guys are right. I hate to say that. They, they are absolutely right. I, I've seen it and, and, and been through some experiences myself. And yeah, I've, I've heard, I've even heard white people use the N word in the same household. Uh, and they just, they, they, they don't, they don't subconsciously don't even care. Some of them don't dare say something like that. And I'm just gonna be, and I was kind of shocked, you know. Uh, I remember somebody I used to hang out with, you know, years ago. And I remember, and it was just little, and, and, his, and his daughter was just probably about eight. I said she was a seventh, eighth grade. She had, just because she had a crush on a little black boy. Um, but her aunt, who was like in high school, junior high, or high school, told her this. Ooh, how can you? Ooh, that's so disgusting, Ashley. How can you sit up there and say something like that with a black boy? And I was like, wow. So yeah, um, people do. People show the true color. Leads us to say, after I seen it and heard all that, and after the clan, the clan, uh, they pulled a clan trick on his buddies did. Uh, pulled a trick on me one time and came, 
came over and dressed in clan uniform and stuff. Yeah. You yeah, their sense of humor, some people's sense of humor is really uh it's tr it's true nature. I'm gonna be it, it, it I'm just gonna come out this it's good and some people you're gonna and this is the reason why. And as a black man, I've experienced that. And I can tell you, yeah. That's why some people, they don't know people. When you think you know people, you don't know people. When you think when people smile on your face, you just don't know what you get. But yeah, because people say people don't see color. Yes, they do. They see because of, on American shores, this is what is, is taught. You don't think the lower class of people. And black people in America are considered the lower class. They don't want to tell you that. They don't want they don't want those people in their family. And there are people being disowned for dating or have a relationship with a black man. Sometimes with some with a black woman. Yeah. And yeah, it, it, it's a it's a total pole effect here. But is it changing? In small pockets it is. But the majority of America, when you go to these towns, from east to the west coast, and every town in between, you're going to come across that problem. And I pray that they don't, if your child's have biracial, that somebody don't use the N-word. I pray that, man. Because they... Because people can be jo joking, but they sarcastic with their jokes. They was, you know, yeah, you know, you heard how you brothers are. You brothers can do that dance. And, and then then you have some some men are insecure because when it comes to a black man, they think that it's something to do with the bedroom, the size of the tool. You'll hear certain things like that, and it's just come on out. But they be jokingly about it. And, but but really they let the insecurity come out. They 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 do. I'm gonna be on the, and you gonna be like, damn, where this coming from? Yeah. What's in the heart? The mouth speaks. The mouth definitely speaks. And I you know the mouth speak and I I can I have experienced it. I've seen it. Well, because I'm a kind of person I don't really confront people. I don't look at people like as the color. But it's funny how things, the people that you don't look at color, but subconsciously they look at color. And it comes out in a different manner. And that's the truth. And they don't know how to deal with you because you're like another culture. And what they've seen on TV, they live in a bubble world. Most people live in a rural, some people live in a rural area where it's predominantly white and suburbs. They don't see they don't understand that they only learn through TV because majority of the people around them look like them. And some people, and then somebody, and not saying that everybody around is ignorant, but you're going to come across some people around as ignorant because they say some things that, hey, that don't apply to me. I'm not black. <laughs> you know, you can flip the N word and everything else in between. They even make tunes. It was so bad with racism. That they even made a tune with the N word in it. We made a rap, we made a country song with it, and everything. Yeah, that's 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 how deep that's how deep it is. Yeah, this this is what you're dealing with, and some people, unfortunately, in American culture. So, and I'm saying I'm like 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 feeling. Them. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but. This, there's a cost in some form or fashion. It can be micronism, and like when you get uh, on your job, where you live, you just never know. So please, black men, you listen to this video, take take the advice of of others who have experienced it, of no someone have gone through it. Think twice, get to know that person by their character. And if you feel you don't feel something is right, get out. 
and remove yourself from the situation. Use wisdom. Use godly wisdom. So that's my message for the video. Um, be careful who you date, who you marry, and you decide, brothers. I think the best thing to do is go overseas. If, if you want to date a woman of a different race, it might be overseas. Just think about it. Even if she's European looking, I think it's better to deal with the ones over there. Depends on what country you're in. All right, then. So think about it. All right, then, guys. I hope you have a good one. Till next time. See you on the next video. Be blessed. And excuse the darkness. All right, then. Take care.